Let's listen to Jesus again. How can you say to your brother or sister, let me renew the splinter in your eye when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? We all know, we all know people of whom we think if she or he could only see themselves as others see them. They are quick to judge or criticize others while being oblivious to personal faults that are obvious to everyone else. And we're not necessarily immune to the same spiritual malady. Now we humans, as a, as a group, have an uncanny ability to excuse ourselves of any failure, fault, or personal error. The ego instinctively protects itself. It's our tactic of pride, which is not readily willing to admit its mistakes and schemes and sins. And we can easily find ways to blame other people or circumstances for the situation we find ourselves in, or in our response, our reactions. So Adam and Eve acted in this way, so blame them. After original sin, what happened? God confronts Eve. Why did you eat of the apple or the fruit? Eve said, the devil made me do it, in so many words. So she blames the devil, did not take responsibility. God confronts Adam. He says, it's the woman you gave me. It's her fault. So he blames Eve, passing the buck. The original creation story of us already, we're passing the buck, not taking responsibility for our mistakes or our sins. And that's also what we do. It's, again, it's really, we instinctively want to the, uh, deflect blame for our faults, etc. But this is very dangerous because if we don't acknowledge our faults and weaknesses and sins, how are we going to grow? How are we going to grow spiritually? How do we need to tear down those ingenious rationalizations and denials we build up that protect our ego. Yes, it's humbling to expose our failures to ourselves and to look at them squarely in, in the face just as they are without blaming them on somebody else or circumstances. It is humbling. It is. Excusing our faults may satisfy our pride for a while, but in reality, we are choosing to blind ourselves and hence make ourselves incapable of seeing the true situation. Therefore, we cannot advance spiritually. In the spirit, we cannot make progress in loving God above all our neighbor ourselves. If we don't acknowledge our character flaws, defects, sins, how are we going to grow in love of God and others? Pretty hard. If we recognize our faults, character uh, weaknesses, etc., sin, we're making the first step towards correcting them, being free of them. Now, the 12-step program, recovery program, has much to say about this, about spiritual life in general. The fourth step is made a fearless and searching moral inventory of ourselves. A fearless and searching moral inventory of ourselves. Now, most people struggling with addiction but yet in the recovery program find this step and usually quite frightening. Yes, yet yeah, successful recovery is almost impossible without doing the step as thoroughly as one can. Because the step does reveal those character flaws, those faults, those sins that have been feeding the objective behavior. That's what's going on. So we might say, well, but isn't that a humiliating to have to face all this gunk in your life and all the things you've done wrong and people you've hurt, etc." The consistent testimony of those who have worked the step is not that they are humiliated. They, are, they experience a new freedom. That's the paradox of spiritual growth. Facing the truth about ourselves is the path to a new life of love of God and others. Does not Jesus say, the truth shall set you free? This is an example, a life-changing one. Facing ourselves as we are is one of the first steps, called humility, one of the first steps towards spiritual growth. Now, I think I did this once before at a uh, Mass on the Grass maybe two years ago. This is just so you can see the dynamic of the fourth step. We have this tool. So this, imagine a piece of paper with columns. The first column, you write down the name of the person that, to whom you have a resentment. 
Then in the next column, you write down what they did that caused the resentment. The next column, what part of our ego was threatened, our status, our emotional financial security, our relationship, intimacy of relationship, what's been challenged, the fourth step, ah. What might have we done to help contribute to the problem? Hmm, very interesting. Fifth step, what are some of the character flaws, et cetera, that are, that are bubbling up as we do this process and see, begin to see ourselves and how we're contributing to the issue? And the final sixth um, around here we talk about which of the deadly sins are at work. Now, notice what's going on. That's just a, the dynamic. So the first two columns, person offend, that offended, the offense, the next four columns are about us, about us, okay? So this is where we begin to understand something about what's making us tick, what's making us tick. And as you do this process, so you have person A, person B, person C, person D, you keep going and keep going across the columns, you begin to notice patterns of behavior and what character flaws are bubbling up, what capital sins and deadly sins are manifesting themselves. Okay? So again, we are discovering a precious self-knowledge, which is so critical in our spiritual growth. Also too, you know, it's the fourth step, we will call the fourth step in Catholic terminology, an examination of conscience. It's a very thorough examination of conscience, let me tell you, very thorough. And of course, as we approach Lent this Wednesday, wonderful way, whatever, however you, we might do a four step or whatever that might look like in helping God, help, asking God to help us face ourselves, again, knowing how much he loves us, um, what, a, what a preparation for the sacrament of reconciliation. That's the fifth step, to admit to oneself, God, another person, the exact nature of our wrongs. I've shared this before, I think, but it was Holy Saturday. I was at Ford City, so it's 19, between 1989 and 1994, okay, up in Ford City, St. Mary's, now Christ Prince of Peace. It's Holy Saturday. We had the vigil in the evening, all the stuff we do to get ready for that. Bing bong at four o'clock in the afternoon. There's John. John wants to go to confession. Being a priest, you can't say, not today, so you come on into the office. He did his fifth step. I didn't know what a fifth step was. He did his fifth step. I had never heard such an honest confession. Never. I don't think it's ever been quite matched. It was just so, he was like naked in the sense he did nothing was, it was all out. The darkness, the stuff, out into the light. Phenomenal. He didn't dissolve into nothingness. He experienced Christ's forgiveness and a freedom. That's the paradox. Face it, bring it to the light, experience God's love and mercy, experience wholeness. That's the dynamic. You don't do the AA fourth step for that to happen, but the, the dynamic's the same. Dynamic's the same. So speaking of um, Ash Wednesday, it begins this Wednesday. <laughs> Go on the, you know, web, look at the bulletin, website, Facebook, whatever, to find the schedule of masses, with ashes, or words are with ashes, okay? And here at St. Agnes, we're offering a lot of stuff to uh, help us on our journey, Lenten journey, uh, of conversion and of going closer to Christ. We kind of just have this in our bones, you know, we just, we kind of know we're supposed to do this and we want to do this, despite all our busyness and distractions. So, this is just to whet your appetite. Next Sunday evening begins alteration a wonderful video series on the Mass. Sunday evenings, check the bulletin flyer. Monday, that's Sunday evening. Monday evening, No Greater Love. It's a five video uh, series uh, on the Passion of Christ, and the video takes you to the locations in the Holy Land where the major events of Jesus' Passion and Death take place. Okay? Um, Tuesday morning, Consecration of the Sacred Heart. Um, Thursday evening, we have adoration from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., but for Lent and maybe hopefully beyond, we're going to introduce adoration from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Thursday evenings. So many of you are working. There's a chance to come, you know, after supper, kids' homework, whatever, and come and spend a few minutes with the Lord. Just a few minutes. Okay? If you have 
couple kids, you know, husband, wife goes, spends 20 minutes, comes back, husband goes, comes back. Well, I just think spending 20 minutes or so, just quiet time. No distractions, just Jesus and you and some other people worshiping him. Consider that. That could be a, that could be a life-changing experience, let me tell you. It really can be. Um, Friday, of course, Stations of the Cross and Rosary. Looking ahead, uh, next Wednesday week begins our St. Agnes uh, brief at ministry. Check the bulletin flyer. Okay? Later on in the end of the month, there'll be opportunity for the Ignatian Lenten uh, Ignatian spiritual exercises. It's a bit more complicated, but talk to Sandy Monier about that, our director of pastoral ministry. Um, you know, and the, the way that may not be totally different, if you want to, oh, I need to do something extra for you, Lord. Karen is inviting you to join the choir. You are, aren't you, Karen? Yeah. Uh, for, for Lent and for Easter. No, Easter, Easter Sunday. Just uh, give it a shot. She'll see you after Mass. Okay? Another way of giving back to God. All right? So I'm just, these are just, just ideas. That, what I'd like you to do is kind of like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do for Lent? And to listen and get more information, do a little you know, research on the website, et cetera. And just say, okay, Lord, I think I want you to go there. Okay. Also, you can sign up for the flock note where we're sending out a, a daily reflection and challenge every day of Lent. The flock note, it's, you can see it in the bulletin. Also, Kristen will be back there to the left. I can register you right there uh, for flock notes. Every day in the flock note, it's an email, you get a, a reflection and a challenge. So we're trying to make it available, not to overwhelm, but just somewhere in there, the day of the week, the content, whatever, you're, you're, I'm sure you can find your spirit saying, do that. God's saying, do that. Okay? So, thanks.